we are going to be looking at the enemy of the world. Last week, we looked at the power in the world. But today, we are going to be looking at the enemies of the world. One thing we must know is this. The enemy is there to distract us from our goal. The enemy is there to deny you of heaven. The enemy is there to make you sin. That is, to go against the commandment of God. The enemy is there always challenging the sovereignty of God. And that is his nature. Before the devil was pushed out from heaven, he challenged the authority of God. And that is why he was pushed down. And the devil will not rest. And that is why this people will say, the devil is roaring around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to be born. May the devil not come near you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, let us look at some of the titles that the devil has been given in the scripture. I'm going to list about 10 that the devil or the enemy has been described with 10 titles. Number one is known as the deceiver. These titles are ascribed to him because of what he does. His nature is reflected in the title. Number one is a deceiver. And you see that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He is also a liar. You see that in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 44. He is the sower of the bad seed. You see that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 26. He is the obstacle. You see that in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. He is a murderer. You see that in John 8, 44. He is a thief. You see that in John 10, 10. He is the enemy. You see that in 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. He is the accuser of God's children. And that is why in Revelation, the word of God is said, the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. You see that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. He is the prince of this world. You see that in John 14, 30. He is the tempter. You see that in Luke 4, verse 12. From the explanation of the parable of this morning, we already see what Jesus is pointing to us. The enemy. The enemy. How come God so good see and all of a sudden the devil came and saw his own? The devil came and planted the bad seed. And when you go back to the Genesis account of creation, you will also see this parable being clear. Yeah. God made everything good. But what happened? The devil came and did what? Destroy everything that God has made. And right from that time till now, mankind, we have not had peace of mind. Because the devil is always there. Now, let us look at the work of the enemies. Let us look at the dimension, or let me say, the types of enemies that you see around. 
They have one source, and that source is the devil. And you see it walking everywhere. Number one, the enemy of human happiness and peace. The enemy of human happiness and peace. And you see this reflected in different kinds of atrocities in the world. How come this good world that God created, there is unhappiness in it? We are supposed to be happy because the word of God is clear. My plan for you is of good. How come the evil everywhere? The devil is the one, the enemy is there. Number one, the enemy of happiness, of human happiness. And what does this enemy, what, what is his what is his work? What does he do? When you see murder being committed everywhere, eh? when you see anger, jealousy, quarrel, it is the enemy of human happiness and peace that is in charge of doing that. Number two, enemy of good leadership. And good election. We are supposed to have free and fair election in the country. In short, all over the world, we are supposed to have good leaders who come into power with sincerity. But what do we see? We see rigging everywhere, we see manipulation everywhere. The enemy of good leadership is in charge. The next, the enemy of love. This is the one that attacks different families. When you see husband and wife always quarreling, when you see husband and wife, there is no atom of love in the family. It is the enemy of love. That is in charge. And that is why that song becomes very, very important. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh, happy, happy, oh, oh happy, happy, oh. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy, oh.
There is no how you can feel happy when you smoke. Because your lungs will tell you later in, in years. Enemy of good health. And this is still the enemy that goes about causing different pandemic and epidemic around the world. Enemy of good education. This is the enemy attacking institution that we have come to see a lot of our practices today and giving up appointment and employment to the wrong people. You see it out there, it's everywhere. The enemy of the word of God. This is the enemy that will never allow you to practice the word of God that you're listening to. And the enemy is always there whenever you gather like this. As you are gathered to listen to the word of God, the enemy is there just to take away the word of God from you. Now, the world that God created is supposed to be good. But when you look at all these things I just mentioned, you see that these are the things that keep happening in the world that we keep asking questions. We keep asking, why sickness? Why grieving? Why manipulations? Why are people sick? Why are there poor people everywhere? Why can't we trust each other? Why can't there be love in the family? But the world that God created is a world that everything should be okay. How come? That is what the enemy is doing. God is not the one who is doing it. Now, what is the way out? We've seen how the devil is walking everywhere, causing problems. Now, what is the way out? Number one. Prayer. Madam Baka will say you pray unto what? Push. Pray. Unto something else. That is the first way out from the trap of the devil. That is the first way out from the manipulations of the evil one. That will be prayerful. Number two, awareness. And let us not claim ignorance of the fact that there are no that, that, that there is no existence of evil in the world. There is evil in the world. And the many things you see around, the question I believe, sometimes you ask yourself, this God, this God that they are talking about, is it really still in existence? God is not the one. The, 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 the gospel reading of today make it clear. And going back to the Genesis at that of creation, you see this gospel being, being, being practicalized there. Awareness. You have to be aware of the fact that the devil exists. The enemy is in existence. You have to be aware. Don't claim ignorant of the fact. You have to be aware of that. Number two. Tolerance. Some people will say what this father saying. Why will you tell us to tolerate the devil? Like um Daboski. Ahozi, we say, I am not a preacher of law. I am what? I am a preacher of what? War. I am a preacher of war. You can't fight all the, all the evil spirits in this world. And you can't fight all of them. No, you can't. Jesus is explaining something to us this morning that we don't understand. Each time we keep killing ourselves. Die, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire. What is Jesus saying? Tolerance! Remember I said we must pray. The battle is not yours. Why will you carry the battle that is not yours? Why will you put it on your head and be fighting? What did Jesus, the owner of the field, what did he say to them? He said, let both of them grow together. On the other day, they are going to the world. Let both of them. 
you will not pray. Don't get it wrong. That's why I said the first way out is prayer. The essence of prayer is for God to keep on, for God to keep watching over you, to deliver you from the manipulations of the evil one. Tolerance. Allow both of them to grow. If the number of Holy Ghost fire and the number of die by fire that we have been calling. Don't you think it's enough for all the evil spirits in this world to have disappeared? But have they all disappeared? Don't worry, I'm going to, in the practical experience of this gospel, I'm going to explain something to you. Have they all disappeared? Every day you keep calling and saying, Die by fire, die by fire! And every time you gather, all you do is, Die by fire, die by fire, die by fire! You forgot that even you, you are an enemy to somebody. So, if the person is also praying, my enemy should die by fire, it means both of you, you will do what? You will both die by fire. Praise the Lord. Amen. You will die by fire. Because if you that you are telling somebody to die by fire, you are also an enemy. The person also is seen, there is another person that is seeing you as God, as an enemy. So if you die by fire, if, if somebody that you are praying for to die by fire dies by fire, it means that the fire to be also turned out to God. Yes. Allow it. The next one, caution. We must always be cautious of distinguishing between the wheat and the wheat. Because they look alike. And that is what you see in the world today. You can't differentiate prophets any longer. You can't differentiate, you can't differentiate pastors any longer. But you know what? By their fruits, we shall not. You know the truth. Just that some of you don't want to tell yourself the truth. You know the truth, but you don't want to tell yourself the truth. That's it. Now, the last one, the way out. Avoid that. Avoid. Yes. Even though we are all together, both good and evil, we are in existence. We still need to do what? Avoid. Tolerance doesn't mean that you mingle with the evil. No. Because if you mingle with the evil, the evil will suffocate you. And come to think of it, why do you think that the, the world is still going back? Because the few good people that exist have refused to what? To speak. This world belongs to us, the good people. It is it God created it for the good people. He created it to be good. And when he finished creating, he said, Everything I created is what? So if that is the case, it means avoidance. We must avoid it. Speak. The fact that you, 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 are, you, are, you are propagating. You, are, you see yourself, you see evil everywhere. It doesn't mean that you should keep quiet. Because the more you keep quiet, the more evil keep what? Spreading. Avoid that. You don't mingle with it. Because when you mingle with it, it's going to deal with you. Now, today, practice of this gospel. Let us look at our world and see this gospel in our world now. Number one, the kind of Christian that we are today is the kind of Christian that I call enemies Christians. Enemies Christian. What do I mean by enemies Christian? We are Christians of this age. They are Christians that never accept blame for themselves. They will never accept blame that they have done anything wrong. We are always shifting our 
blame to the devil. We are always shifting our responsibility to the devil. And that is why you see that when people have done something wrong, instead of them to accept it, they will be looking for one which is one witch and wizard to push it up on top. When something happens, ah, it is your father in the village. Oh. And that is the reason why you see the number of churches that keep increasing every day. Do not stop. It is your mother in the village. And you keep looking for one prophet that is going to help you out. Recently, I was with a family that I've been trying to sort out some issues. What happened? This man is suffering from stroke. The wife has been consulting different prophets. And the prophets, they have been telling her that it is the, the, hus the husband's mother that caused the sickness to the man. And the man said, he's not going to agree to that. How will you say that it is the woman that gave that to me, that, that carried me for nine months? How will you say the woman is the one doing it? It is causing a big trouble in the family now. He said he would not accept. And it does not even end there. When you visit these places, they will tell you to bring 45,000 naira consultation. Because we don't put money on our own, you don't value us. People will start putting money for you to come and see us in the parish office. Maybe by then, you will value it. You know everything is packaged. You just package it before you consult your priest. You have to pay some money. By then, maybe you value what you have. Christians, Christians, Christians are prophets trying to know their enemies, trying to know who wants to kill them. That is the kind of Christians we have today. Enemies, Christians. Number two. We are even enemies to ourselves without knowing. How are we enemies to ourselves? When you see your brother prospering, you see God blessing your brother. Instead of you to be happy that God is blessing your brother, you are just naturally hating your brother or your sister because God is blessing him or her. Which other witch and wizard are you looking for again other than that person? That is the main witch now. And that is the main wizard. You are going to look for the witch and wizard in the village. No. By the very fact that your brother is doing well, it is giving you sleepless nights. You are already the witch already. And you are the wizard. We are enemies for ourselves. We don't know. When you are in charge of a particular local government, when you are supposed to you throw for the people and make life comfortable for them. You refuse because they did not give you votes. You refuse to develop a particular section of the, of, the, of the economy because you did not get votes from those areas. And you are looking for the enemy that is worrying us. We are looking for the death that is worrying us. The devil is not far, he's just with us. It's just there. Just like what I shared with them in the, in the evening mass the other day. A man's car was, was, was caught fire the other day. Even VIO did not have fire extinguisher. They had to come out on the express and be begging people, please bring your fire extinguisher, give us your fire extinguisher. Trust me, many persons were driving away, nobody wants to answer them. I now have to stop, open my book for them, to take my fire extinguisher, to go and put off the, the fire that was about to, to consume that car of that man. Are we looking for the enemies, far? Are you going to the village to look for the enemies? The enemy is just here. It's just with us. We are enemies to ourselves. We are shouting, Nigeria is not good, Nigeria is not good. Who are the people doing us? Are we, is it, do we have strangers doing us? 
Is it not still the same Nigerians that are leaving us? And we are looking for heaven in this map. Now, the question of evil, the question of the existence of evil, it has been a long issue. If God is truly God, why will he allow this happen to me? If God is really God, why will he allow this pandemic to consume the world? If God is really God, why will he allow us to be suffering? Why will he allow me to lose my job? Why will he allow my mother die? Why will he allow this happen to me? When you are asking that question, you should also ask, why did he allow his only begotten son to be crucified? This is something we must know. From everything that happened to us, there is always a lesson that we are going to learn. You see this pandemic, some of us are seeing this as the greatest evil that has been that, that came on us as human. No. We have a lot of lessons to learn from this pandemic. So my brothers and sisters, today, Jesus is calling you and I to understand there is evil in the world. It is everywhere. The evil are numerous. And if there are if the number of those who are evil are more than those who are good, keep increasing in the world. What then should be at this position? At this position is this. Let us never fail to keep doing what we are supposed to do. You see the thing that is called right things? Do the right things that you are supposed to do. If you are holding a political position, do the right thing. As the father of the house, do the right thing. As the mother of the house, do the right thing. Children, do the right thing. As the leader, do the right thing. When we all do the right thing, are we still going to be looking for the devil everywhere? We won't. The devil is not far. It is living within. May the Lord deliver us all from the power of the evil one through Christ our God. Amen.